Welcome to the first installment of Soaring with the Pelicans on HTC. The Pelicans are celebrating their 15th anniversary season and we'll give you an insider's look at how the Pelicans have thrived since 1999. Ever wonder how we select singers for the National Anthem? In a story by Drew Parker, we take a look at how the National Anthem trials were held at our stadium. We will also go behind the scenes with Pelicans head groundskeeper Corey Russell in a segment called the Pelicans Turf. On April 7th, the Pelicans held Military Appreciation Day. The Myrtle Beach Air Force had their 20th reunion at TicketReturn.com Field. And in a segment we call Salute to the Myrtle Beach Air Force Base, we take a look at the then and now of the Air Force Base that was once here. And finally, we end our program with the adventures of Splash. Splash is the Pelicans mascot, and he's one of the busiest Pelicans in the community. I'm Travis Lucian, and you're soaring with the Pelicans. into left field and Andrews comes through with the RBI single. Alvy is home and the Pelicans lead at seven to six. A ball hard hit down the first base, tagging the bag and throwing down a second and what a slide by Michael. Oh. Jason swings and rifles one fair inside the right field line now. I have to tell you that uh, Raphael Foucault was my favorite. He was the first but he was also my favorite. Uh, Marcus Giles is, an, is another one. He's, he's really was a great ball player. Oh, if I could remember the ball. Well, there was Francoeur, Assault of La Machia. That, that name we always loved because it took up his entire back of his shirt. Um, but there's a number of players that every once in a while you'll see their name and it, it'll bring back some, some fond memories. See tomorrow's stars today. And, and, that's, and that's the way we've, it's been, and, and it turned out to be that way. But uh, on that particular night, everyone was so excited to get that, that level of a celebrity into this park was really something. And uh, if we could do that more often, I, the excitement would be off the charts. 2008 campaign and then underwent successful Tommy John surgery by Dr. James Andrews on August the 8th of last year. In Pensacola, here's the 0-2 pitch. Strike three called. Got him looking. Here in the third, the 3-2 pitch. Swung on a chop to the right side. Freddie Freeman will glove it on the backhand. Flips to Cordier, who is there. Over at third base. Jason swings and rifles one fair. The one He swings, guides it on the ground. Behind hands are at short. Flags it up with a throw on a bounce to first. And he got him in time. Defense straight away. 3-2. Swinging a line shot, diving and a catch by Hanser Alberto. He will run to second for a double play. If we win, fine. If we don't win, that's okay too. Because people come here to watch a real baseball game. Real players at this particular level. The history of the Pelicans, uh, you know, goes back to North Carolina. That's where the, 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 most of the team and most of the players came from. And, that's, and I think that's where a lot of the camaraderie for not just the players, but for the area came from. Because a lot of people from here used to go and watch them uh, in North Carolina. So if you really want to see where the roots are, 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 have started, go back to North Carolina and bring it on here and you'll see the connection. Uh, the Pelicans organization has been a great organization with the makeup of the beach and the fact that you have so many tourists coming in here. It had to be something uh, that, that, that would get the public's attention. Well, it's a great facility. What made it even better was the, the monitors, the new scoreboard, uh, the new seats that we have out there. The beach area used to be a big burn, and now with it being, it's kind of a party area, you know, it's cool because it's unique to this ballpark and it's unique to that, this market. That's one of the things that uh, the Greenberg Sports Group has really tried to do, is kind of make everything beach themed and kind of 
kind of grab that, you know, that beach mentality and bring it, bring it into the ballpark a little bit. That was really cool. The, um, the first one was a really unique experience. I'd never been to an all-star game at any level or been involved in the planning of one. It was really neat to kind of see that through um, from start to finish. Well, I think it says a lot that we've had uh, two all-star games here at Tube Carolina League. I think everybody would rather um, talk to the different people in the California and Carolina League. They'd like to have it here, um, here in Myrtle Beach every year, as we would too. One of the huge things that we have going on for us is our game day staff. They're probably the biggest asset we have. And it's just, wow, these people are fantastic. They're so nice. And that's because they want to be here. And that's the thing that we try to do. Is we want everybody to want to be here and have a, have a good time. The Pelicans try to present this as, as a family-style entertainment. And I think, uh, I think they've succeeded. Grandmothers and grandfathers bring, bring their uh, grandchildren with them. And uh, they, they kind of grow up to the day when they themselves could make the trip down here to see baseball. I have fun. If you're not here to have fun and enjoy yourself, you, you need not stop by the guest services. We've been really lucky to have the support from, um, from the, upper, the upper management. It's also you know, a tremendous thing to, to our fans, both our returning tourists who return over and over again every year and our season ticket holders and our regular diehard fans that they come out and they support the team. Wow, Bruce Dal Canton was one of the um, one of the greatest individuals who's ever come through this uh, this ballpark. Bruce really helped me gu guide me um, to the different the different things that they needed from us, and and what I could do to you know make myself better as well as um, you know help the players achieve what they needed to achieve. I think this Pelican organization uh, does a lot for the community, whether it's uh, a charitable uh, uh, endeavors or. Uh, anything dealing with the public, uh, speaking engagements that uh, Splash makes or the general manager will make, I think that they have a very nice touch with the community as such. And I think people appreciate that and for that reason like to come to the ballpark too, alongside baseball. Come on out to the Pelicans game. Um, we got, we've got the cheapest ticket in town. You can't play mini golf for that. You can't go to a movie for that. So it's phenomenal. You don't have to be a baseball fan. I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize coming in here that we've got so many other things going on um, that even if you're not a, not a baseball fan, it's still... The Myrtle Beach Pelicans held national anthem tryouts on March 12th at TicketReturn.com. Field fans of all ages came out to try their luck at the national anthem. Our very own Drew Parker has the star-spangled Pelican auditions. I'm here at TicketReturn.com Field in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where today are national anthem tryouts. People are vying for the opportunity to sing for the Myrtle Beach Pelicans during the 2013 season. Christine, you are a judge here today. What exactly were you looking for in the people who are auditioning? Definitely lyrics because, you know, we have to know the song. And secondly, I would say the confidence, somebody that just comes in and owns it and is really feeling the song. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Jenna Grace, how do you think you did today? I think I did all right. I think I did pretty good. We've done better, but it was, it was good. <laughs> pretty good. 
The weather's right, so it made the voice warm. Uh, I really hope I remembered all the words. <laughs> I think I did pretty good. This is all in, in good fun. It's, I'm so excited to be a part of it, so I had a blast. Well, I've been practicing all this time, and if I blew it, uh, I'd have to wait a whole another year. Have you always been able to sing in front of big crowds and in, judge, in front of judges? Not when I, well, more when I was younger, but now as I get older it gets harder, but yeah. <laughs> Why do you think it gets harder when you get older? Because you're more aware of what's going on. I actually get more nervous than if I know the crowd. <laughs> Have you always wanted to be a singer? Yes, sir. Why is that? Um, Because when I was little, I would just sing at church, and I just had that little voice inside my head from God that it was just my destiny. What would it mean to you to be able to sing for the Pelicans here this season? I think it would be just a great opportunity to showcase my skills, and I feel like anyone who has the gift of song, it's a gift from God, so you should showcase it. My two loves in life are sports and music, so to be able to combine them both really means a lot. It took a lot of like courage to get here, but I'm so glad I'm here. It's been a great day of auditions here at the Myrtle Beach Pelicans Park, with a lot of great talent showing up. Come out to the park this year in 2013 to see who will be singing the national anthem. The Pelicans have won best field in the Carolina League five out of the last six seasons. We take a look with head groundskeeper Corey Russell in a segment we call Pelicans Turf. Uh, what we normally do on a game day for the Pelicans, uh, we'll get in about 9 a.m., go ahead and get a game plan for the day, and then uh, usually get on the mowers, mow first thing, and then uh, about 11.30 or so, we'll start looking at it, work on the infield skin, the dirt areas, getting that watered in real good to keep a consistent moisture level for the day. Uh, usually we'll soak it down just before lunch, grab a bite, and then uh, kind of depend on what the team schedule is, either 2 o'clock for early work or 4.15 for normal batting practice. We'll just kind of go from there. Um, that and the timing and the weather pretty much dictates our uh, schedule for the, for the afternoon, whether we have to water three or four more times or just one more time, or if we're looking at watching radar and getting the, everyone ready for tarp which is a uh, normal occurrence here at the beach in the coastal weather. So just different things like that. Our crew consists of uh, Kevin Schmidt, who is my seasonal assistant. He's back for a second season. Uh, very lucky to have him back, especially with all the activity going on in the field this year. Oh, he's a, he's a huge asset. Um, you know, he does a great job. Obviously, coming in last year, uh, he's had experience on a minor league field before and the NFL field. But, I mean, he does... He does a lot of the work. Um, he takes care of the mound, which is just about the most important thing out there, I feel, because that's where every play starts. And if it's not proper footing, um, you know, you could have big problems. But uh, every day throughout the year, we, I have my Australian Shepherd with me, Maggie. She's uh, nine and a half, but she still gets around really good. Plays Frisbee out there with us, and it's really a morale booster for the crew. There's something else, you know, for us to keep our minds on, to get our minds off the field a little bit, you know, just. Uh, She's always fun. She always barks at everyone to say hello, and then she'll warm right up to you. But uh, she's she's fun to have around. Yeah, the uh, the biggest I guess misconception about what we do, as far as the importance of the field between the uh, grass and the dirt, the gra uh, dirt is definitely the most important as far as from a player safety issue. Uh, any one time, you can have ten players on the dirt areas when for the uh, the grass, you're only going to have three players at most on there. So. Just keeping a proper moisture level through our about four or five inches that we have um, of infield material, the infield clay. And so the humidity here, um, you know, helps us do that a little bit easier than places like Texas where it's 105 degrees and it's dry heat, you know, to 85 degrees and nice humidity here really helps us do that. Uh, being the groundskeeper, you get to see your work come to fruition every single day at 7.05 or 3.05 or 6.05, whatever, whatever time first pitch is. Um, Seeing everyone come to the ballpark, taking pictures of the field, you know, oohing and on, hopefully, at how, how good it looks. But uh, no, it's just, it's just great just being able to see everything come together every single night. It's kind of like the instant gratification. You don't have to wait months and months and months.
Welcome back to Soaring with the Pelicans. I'm Travis Lucian. Military Appreciation Day was on April 7th at TicketReturn.com Field and in our salute to the Air Force Base that was once in Myrtle Beach, we're joined by Air Force veteran Rick Lab, who talks about the Air Force Base that was once in Myrtle Beach. We had about 3,000 military out here when we were active, and there was probably about four or 500 civilians oh, wow. that ran this base. Your civil engineering squadron makes sure that if, if, uh, uh, if there's a problem with the facility, they fix it. They're like the, you know, they're, they, they took care of air conditioners and stuff like that. You had your services, which they fed you. Mm -hmm. You know, you had uh, your mission support squadron, which was uh, your personnel office and those types of things. And it's all support. On the maintenance side of the house, you had uh, maintenance for airplanes. You also had maintenance for avionics, which was the equipment to take care of the airplanes. You had missiles, a missile detachment that, that put the missiles on the airplane. Uh, and then the other division was your operations, and those were pretty much the pilots. This is Captain Phyllis. One of the major roads through here is called Phyllis Boulevard and it was named after him. He was killed in a desert storm. He was shot down. There's probably only about four or five buildings that I even remember that are still here. But I tell you, Myrtle Beach done a great job. You can't believe it. Colonel Hayden, welcome back. We're live on TV. I want to tell you that in case you didn't know. Oh, do I have to be nice? <laughs> yes, you have to be nice. <laughs> How does it feel to be back? It's on? great. You just don't know, and this is what a reception. This is really, really good. How did it feel to have the people be so wonderful to you, even while you were over there? That was that made all the difference. I I returned from another war one time where it was not like this, and I'll tell you. Just reading the newspapers and getting the letters and the many, many uh, things that folks did here, especially in the area for us, it never stopped and you always knew that you had that support. It, it was really great. Myrtle Beach Pelican named Splash. <laughs> Full of fun. Clowning around. With great surprise. Now, now it's time, time for the adventures of Splash. Splash is so excited about the 75th anniversary celebration for Myrtle Beach as festivities are about to begin at the law enforcement building. Splash loves to interact with people, occasionally Stan and George, who he gives handshakes to before entering the party. Hey everyone, says Splash. Great day to be celebrating this awesome city. You got that right, Splash. You are the best pelican on the Grand Strand, says everyone. The beginning of the ceremony starts with Splash making his speech at the podium. Oh boy, did the crowd love it. Especially Sue, who was celebrating her birthday and wanted a picture with Splash. Of course, said Splash. However, Sue's friend Barbara couldn't take the picture. You are silly, Barbara. Just press that button, said Splash. There you go. Thank goodness. Then it was 
time for Splash to make his rounds with everyone, including city officials and residents. Splash has the pleasure to meet Bob and Ellen. Splash asks Bob, can I take Ellen on a date? Bob, no Splash, we've been together for 50 years, so shoo. Splash, okay, maybe some other time. Now, it is time to go relax before eating celebration cake. Yum, says Splash. That's one sandcastle I would love to eat. I could give some to my pelican brothers and sisters. After cake, it was off to the ALS walk where Splash greeted participants from young to old. There was Chris. Then Jane. Then Dancing Mary. And also Jim. Young Emily was the most excited to see Splash. Hey Splash, said Emily, you are my favorite bird. Well, you are my favorite person, said Splash. After all the greetings, it was time for Splash to burst out his bird moves and dance the day away. I'd like to thank you for joining us on Soaring with the Pelicans on HTC. Join us next time as we talk to some of the players on the 2013 Pelicans roster as well as interviews with Pelicans partners and diehard fans. I'm Travis Lucian, you've been Soaring with the Pelicans.